Hey guys, Red Chopsticks here. Let's talk about the Friendship Games. The third movie for the Equestrian Games movie had a lot of hype in the film ever since the ending in Rainbow Rocks. We finally get the question on where the human Twilight was doing this entire time during the other two movies and finally see her interact with the characters. I won't lie, I was actually looking forward to seeing this movie come out. But the question remains, did the film live up to the hype? Now I will give out some spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, go check it out right now. But since you're already watching my video, you clearly already seen the movie, so I can give out all the spoilers I want without any repercussions. So, did Friendship Games live up to its hype, or should we go ahead and cancel these games? Let's start off with our characters. Rainbow Dash, Applejack, Fluttershy, Pinkie Pie, Rarity, and Sunset- Whoa, what happened to Sunset? Not only has she gone through a wardrobe change, but her skin seems different as well. Here's Sunset in the other films, and here's her now. Now while I liked her appearance in the other films, I'm not saying this is a bad thing, it's just... different. I don't know, it's gonna take me some time to get used to it. I'm used to it. Sunset is our main character in this movie, and you can tell how much she's grown over the films. She's no longer trying to redeem herself, now she has a new purpose. She is given the task to understand how magic works in this world, and to make sure that it doesn't affect the games. You can tell how much this means to her and how much her friends mean to her as well, even coming up with the conclusion that magic is only in this world because of her. It's nice development for her, but sadly, that's about it for many characters. Oh sure, there are small moments for characters like Applejack's sportsmanship or Rainbow's pep rally, but for the most part, there's nothing really new to them. No one shines like Trixie or Vinyl did in Rainbow Rocks, and Flash here has even less lines than the other film. I think at most four. I'm not a fan of Flash, but if you're gonna put him in the movies, give him some development for Pete's sakes! But that's our old characters, how about some new ones? Well, let's start off with the human Twilight. Now, I would like to make the point that this is not Princess Twilight, this is the human Twilight. It's quite interesting to compare the two different Twilights. This Twilight is antisocial, very timid, and gives into pressure. She is very interested in learning and doesn't really care much about us except for her lover Spike, her normal dog, until it talks later on. It makes sense in the movie. Her character goes through the typical path in the movie, but there are some moments where you do feel for her. We finally get Cadence to show up in the film as the Dean of Crystal Prep High, and by Luna's grace does she stick out like a sore thumb. This entire school is dull in colors and Cadence is hard not to notice in the school. And we finally have... I guess the villain of the movie? Principal Cinch. Her character isn't anything that special. You've seen her before. She's an uptight person who only cares about keeping her appearances and her legacy. Even her tone is a familiar one to anyone. It doesn't matter whether or not Crystal Prep wins or loses. The important thing is that we are expected to win because Crystal Prep has a reputation. Now if you'll excuse me, it is time for my daily afternoon cup of the Tears of Orphans. <sighs> ah, that's good sorrow. Her character's not much in the film, nothing pure evil, and she doesn't even get her comeuppance in the film. But she's not the most disappointing part for me. That goes to the Shadow Bolts. Now when I first heard about the Shadow Bolts, I thought it was going to be maybe the rivals we've seen in the show as part of the group. Lightning Dust, Suri, Iron Will, maybe even Starlight Glimmer. But no, we got new characters, who sadly don't get enough screen time, or is that visually impressive. Compared to the Dazzlings, while the personalities were simple, they were visually impressive to look at and are brightly colored. The Shadow Bolts personalities don't get much time to shine and don't leave much of an impression on me, except for Sugarcoat, because for the sake of irony. Hi Sugarcoat! That was a really bad speech. You should consider not speaking in public. The games aren't really competitive since we've never lost. You're really bad at this! Did you get it? Her name is Sugarcoat, but she doesn't do it at all. I'll admit, I got a chuckle out of that. What's more frustrating about them is that there was a good idea behind them as rivals for the main six. At the beginning of the film, it shows them as rivals, and as it goes on, you can see how they can be. An example is Applejack and Sugarcoat. Both of them have honesty, but one knows when and how to give out the truth, and the other is blunt. Again, this is a good idea, and maybe it would mean something to the film, and it all adds up to nothing. Anyway, how's the music? Pretty good, but requires a few listens. The songs are catchy, but not at first. The only song that I actually found myself remembering was the CHS Prep song. Now that's not to say that the songs are bad, they are still good. There's a good song for a montage for the first round of the games, and Unleash the Magic was a very interesting song, but I think that's because when I first heard this song, I got a Chicago feel for it. Did anyone else get that? Unleash the magic, unleash the magic. 
use the magic If we lose, then you're to blame He had it coming The music also helps the story as well, either help move it forward or to help give characters moments. So what's the story? Well, CHS is going to host an event that happens every four years, the Triwizard Tournament, I mean the Friendship Games! At the same time, Twilight is studying the magic from CHS and is forced into the Friendship Games and competes. As the game goes on, Twilight's machine starts stealing magic from our heroes and starts to force portals from Equestria to show up. It's up to our heroes to protect each other and to find out what Twilight's doing. The story doesn't really have much in twists and turns, but what the film does have is a pacing problem. The film is short, and it does suffer from it. It has to go so quickly and do things for the story. Twilight's pendant steals magic quickly from our heroes, and it's under play. She's stealing magic, and the most we can muster is... Oh well. You can feel how quickly the film is going, and it's a bit predictable at what happens, all the way up to the climax. Fair warning, I'm now going to go into some big spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, and you want to, then go see it. Now. Seriously, right now. It's online somewhere, just go see it. If you're still with me, I hope you saw the movie, because here we go! Twilight finally unleashes the magic that she has stored up, via by pressure by her school, and is corrupted by the magic and becomes Midnight Sparkle. No, really, that's the name that she's given, and wants to go to Equestria for more magic. But Sunset stops her by combining their elements! Combined, I am Captain Planet! I will not be the first nor last person to ever make that joke. And with that said, I regret nothing! Sunset and Twilight have an awesome battle, for one minute, but that is one awesome minute, and defeats Twilight and saves her at the same time. The story quickly wraps up with Twilight joining CHS and starts on a new path on friendship. And then there's the final scene! Princess Twilight finally appears in the movie and sees her humor counterpart, and it ends. This sort of implies that there might be an Equestria 4 coming out, but that's not the big thing for me. It's this line. I didn't get your messages until just now because I was caught in this time travel loop and honestly, it was the strangest thing that's ever happened to me. W was that a spoiler for season 5? I mean, you can't ignore that line. It's clear as day. It makes me wonder if this movie should have happened after season 5 was over. I got my eyes on you, Friendship Games. Why am I squinting? My final rating for Friendship Games is a 7.5 out of 10. I like the movie. I think personally I prefer Rainbow Rocks over the film, but I have to say I did enjoy the Friendship Games. The characters are good, the music is nice, and the story is okay. Now it does have a few problems, a short run time, a fast pace, and missed opportunities with the Shadow Bolts. In the end, the Friendship Games is a good film and I think fans will like it too, and also get it on DVD when it comes out. Friendship Games may not have gotten the gold like Rainbow Rocks did for me, but it is to say at least that it does deserve silver. But don't take my word for it, check it out and see for yourself. 